I thought they did a tremendous job, didn't you, this morning? Boy, they did great. The message came through loud and clear. Cake. In fact, I'm even told that I believe one of the young ladies made the cake for us this morning. But what a tremendous concept, tremendous thought to really begin to contemplate and to focus on the reason for the season. That's where we're going this morning with the next set of, of sermons, Christmas sermons, the reason for the season. And these young people, I appreciate their, their heart. I want to welcome many of you to the service this morning, some visiting with us, some sitting closer than normal. I like it all, and I appreciate you being here. Uh, speaking of those acts of kindness, I read this past week that at a Dairy Queen in northern, I believe it was Minnesota, over 900 cars paid for the, for the, for the next car in line. And kept, on, and kept it going. They said by, I think it was 8.44, 8.45 in the morning, over 275 people had done that. Little things like that that restore your faith in humanity. All right, you hear enough of the bad news every day. It's time for some good news in life. And I'm glad that the Bible is filled with good news. If you have your Bibles, please open to Isaiah chapter 7 this morning. Isaiah chapter 7 will be in two passages. Isaiah chapter 7 is the first passage we'll be in. Isaiah chapter 7, an interesting Christmas passage, but there's a little verse in Isaiah, a verse that is buried deep. If you've sat through my Bible class, many of you seniors have, or have come through our school, you'll know this particular chapter has a tremendous promise. In Isaiah chapter 7, there's a prophecy made, a foretelling, something that will happen. You see, what God says always will happen. You may not see it today, you may not believe it today, but what God says is true. Isaiah chapter 7, if you're there, look in verse number 14, where there's a prophecy from the Lord that says this, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. This is the virgin birth prophecy found in Isaiah. If you have your Bibles open still, if you would turn over to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. The beginning of Matthew and the beginning of Luke, we have two uh, accounts of the Christmas story. In Matthew chapter 1, we have a perspective from Joseph and an angel. In Matthew chapter 1, in verse number 22, the angel's speaking to Joseph. We'll look a little, a little later on, not today, but another service about how Joseph was, uh, was come to by an angel. And an angel said to Joseph, basically, listen, uh, the, the girl that you're engaged to, Mary, she's not been unfaithful to you. Uh, she's not uh, violated her commitment to you. Uh, what has happened to her now that she's pregnant is from the Holy Ghost. And we'll look at a different service, that response. But boy, what a story to tell. I'm pregnant, and it's not my fault. Who's going to believe you? Well, Joseph was struggling with that until an angel showed up. In Matthew chapter 1, an angel shows up to Joseph. Beginning in verse number 18, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things while he contemplated these things, while he really stressed out about these things. Joseph had a little bit of turmoil in his life like we have had at times past. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now look at verse 22 and 23, if you would, please. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. Which prophet? Isaiah the prophet, saying, verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. You see, there was a promise through Isaiah the prophet that a virgin should conceive, and that's a sign of the Lord. But the promise was fulfilled not just in a virgin being with child of the Holy Ghost, but that a child would be born, and, that, and, and they would call his name Emmanuel, which means, as Matthew tells us, God with us. 
The reason for this season is this name, Emmanuel, God with us. It wasn't a normal birth. It was a supernatural birth. Sometimes during this this season, the Christmas season, people want to spread good cheer and people ought to feel warm and fuzzy and I'm happy for all those things. Drink eggnog and eat Christmas treats to your heart's content. But this promise of the Lord reveals something. that the, The God of the universe would come to earth, God with us. That a righteous creator would come down with unrighteous man, God with us. That the King of heaven and the Lord of lords would reach down to fallen man, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. There's power, there's a promise, and there's provision. God with us. But because of this promise and fulfillment, God with us, I believe that we can learn some things, learn some truths about God because of this promise and fulfillment, God with us. Lord, I thank you for this time, for this opportunity to look at your word, especially with a focus on your son Jesus in this Christmas season. Lord, thank you for the young people. I ask now for your help and blessing. Lord, I ask you to help us in the next few moments that our hearts would be turned towards you. Lord, may we look to you. May we see you in a fresh, new way. May our hearts be challenged. May our souls be uplifted. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Help me during this time to say those things which would be clear. And Lord, I ask if there's someone here who's never trusted you as their Savior today that they would do that. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Over these Christmas messages, I'll be focusing on this truth, Emmanuel, God with us. What does it mean or how does it relate to us? What are the ramifications or the reason for this season? And I will give us some words that begin with that R-E, the reason. This morning, the word that I want to give to us this morning, and I'll explain it from God's word, is this. Because, because of Emmanuel, God with us, we have reliability. There is a reliability, or we'll say it this way, God will do what he says he will do, or that God always does what he says he will do. You see, we're used to broken promises. Welcome to the political landscape of the entire history of the United States. I looked up some broken promises from past politicians. Things like this. One president said this, we will not go to war. Less than a year later, the U.S. was in World War I. Not a small skirmish. Someone else said this, I will privatize Social Security. To this day, it's not been privatized. How about this phrase? No new taxes. <laughs> and if you believe that, I have some tremendous beachfront property, miles of sand in Arizona. I'll reduce the national debt. We are surrounded, it seems, by broken promises. But it's not just politicians. Those are the easy ones to pick on, are they not? They're front and center. They're, they're public in a public forum. You know that businesses also give broken promises. I looked up some of them. Thanks for asking. How about this? Sanka Coffee. Their slogan for years Everything you love about coffee. Now, I enjoy coffee, but I don't like Sanka coffee. Sanka coffee is not everything that I enjoy about coffee. In fact, that's everything I avoid about coffee. Someone, uh, one company said this, Allstate Insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. The only problem was, according to a recent survey, of all the insurance companies, they were in the bottom percentage of customer service. So apparently their own customers didn't think they were in good hands. Avis, the car rental agency for years, slogan was, we try harder. But according to a survey, they had the worst business model of all the car agencies. And... uh, De Beers Diamond Company said this, Jewelry said this, a diamond is forever. There are only a few things in life that it will be forever. That's God, 
All right? And those who put their trust in him will live forever with him. A diamond's not forever. We are familiar with broken promises. The Titanic, unsinkable. And if we're not careful, we will approach God's word, we'll approach God the exact same way. Oh, that's a nice thing you say. That's a nice promise. Oh, I wish it were true. I wish that what he says he will do, he will actually do. And my friend, I'm here to tell you this this morning, that God always does what he says he will do. God is reliable. Because Emmanuel, because God came to dwell among men, it shows and proves that God will always do what he says he will do. I want to notice three or four things this morning. God did what he says he will do. He did what he said he, he would do in the face of the impossible. This Christmas story, from an earthly perspective, was impossible. You see, we needed a man for salvation who would be free from the curse. Back in Genesis, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, death passed upon all men, the Bible says, for that all have sinned. And the curse the curse from God was placed upon humanity. And the only way of salvation was that someone to be born free from the curse. And you have to ask yourself, well, how could this be done? Well, leave it up to God to figure it out. Leave it up to God to have a problem that seems unsolvable and then solve the problem. In fact, he said, I'll do it this way. I'll have a woman conceived by the Holy Ghost so that he is human, this man, a child. But he's also, because of the Holy Ghost, he is God. He would be free from the curse. He would use a virgin girl who came from the seed of David. You see, throughout the Old Testament, you see prophecy after prophecy that God set himself up walls and barriers and obstacles that then he overcame with Jesus Christ. He told David that of David's seed, he would rule and reign forever. But then a few generations later, there was a king who was from the seed of David that the curse came down because of his choices that none of his seed would ever sit on the throne again. You'd have to look at that in humanity and say, how could God promise David but then curse this king? God fulfilled it with Jesus Christ in the face of the impossible. You see, Mary was from the seed of David. And because she was from the seed of David, we find that in the book of Luke, then Jesus had the lineage of David. But Joseph was also from the seed of David. You see, Joseph was from the ruling line. Joseph was under that curse, and no one following that particular king in his curse could ever sit on the throne again. But because Jesus wasn't the son of Joseph, he could sit on the throne. But because he was the son of Joseph the firstborn stepson of Joseph, with the full rights, he could sit on the throne. He's the only one who could sit on the throne forever and ever and ever. In the face of the impossible, God brought Jesus to us. He is reliable. I don't know what problem you may face in your life, but God loves to strike down and crumble the impossibilities. He loves to set up scenarios where you say there is no way out, and then he shows the only way out. So that we look to him and say, God, it can only be you. You see, he was free from the curse. He fulfilled prophecies, over 400 prophecies in the Old Testament that were fulfilled only in Jesus Christ. In the face of the impossible, God does what he says he will do. God in the flesh. You see, there are stories. And about every religion, almost every nation, civilization, in mythology about God and gods dwelling among humans. In Greek mythology, you'll find that the Greek gods coming and walking around humans. In Roman mythology, you'll find similar stories. In Native American legends, you'll find stories. In Irish legends, in almost every civilization, there are some stories, some legends, some mythology about God dwelling, or gods dwelling among humans. What's interesting, though, in almost all of mythology and legends, they're always in relationship to meddling, or they're always meddling in human affairs. You hardly ever find them solving too many problems. And if they do, they solve them in a self-serving way. 
My Bible tells me that Emmanuel, God with us, that Jesus Christ came to this earth not to meddle in human affairs, but to solve the greatest problem we know, and that's our sin problem. To restore a relationship with God. John chapter 1 tells us, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was the life. And the life was a light of men. And the word, it's Jesus Christ. The Bible says, was made flesh and dwelt among us. Your life, your problems may seem to be impossible. But God will always do what he says he will do. In the face of the impossible, God will do what he says he will do. Though it seems improbable, God will do what he says he will do. That the God of the universe would come down to us. The wise men had studied for so long, over 490 years had passed while the wise men, with roots probably back to Daniel, with roots back to Daniel and his prophecies had studied and they waited and they waited. People had come and people had gone. Men had been born and men had perished waiting for the Messiah, though it seemed improbable. Scripture, revelation from God had been silent for over 400 years. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, almost a 400-year gap. Almost no revelation from God himself until until some angels showed up to a few characters, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. We close the Old Testament with some prophecy, some, some, some prophecy from, from prophets, and we open the New Testament with proclamations from angels. That's the way that God shows up. It seems improbable in one moment. One seemingly insignificant measurement on the span of time. One moment. In one small moment, the Word became flesh. In one small moment, deity became humanity. In one moment, the one for whom all things are for and by whom are all things became a thing like you and me, God with us. In one moment, the Lord of glory became a child of earth. In one moment, the tiny babe lying in a manger of Bethlehem was the one without whom was not made anything that was made. The tiny, little chubby hands of a newborn baby. The small perfect fingernails. Those with children may remember those days, or maybe you're in them right now. The soft cries, the loud cries, the warmth, the cooing, God with us. The arm of the baby around the mother's neck shows the arm of the everlasting one underneath all things. The words of the one who spoke on earth, the same words from the same one who created all things. In one moment, in one moment, the improbable happened. There are births every single day, but none as significant as that one over 2,000 years ago. In one moment, Jesus Christ was on earth. In one moment, the course of human history was forever changed. Improbable? You better believe it. Why would God do that? To be among us. You see, it, in the face of the impossible, and it seemed impossible, Im improbable, but God uses the remarkable. He used the angels. Boy, that'll scare you half to death. Pastor Ryan preached a tremendous message this past Wednesday on the angels to the shepherds and the response of the shepherds. God breaks the silence with a group of angels to lowly shepherds. In the timing to Mary and Joseph and the taxation, the remarkable. There is no one who would be thankful for taxation. But without taxation, we don't have Mary and Joseph in Bethlehem. And yet I never... I have never 
come into April or file early and say, wow, I'm thankful to pay my taxes. I'm thankful to live in America. I'm thankful for what, for what comes from some of those things, but I'm not thankful to pay taxes. Yet God used the, the taxation in Luke chapter 2. They're remarkable. The taxation was remarkable. I'll get them back where they need to go. So he's actually born in Bethlehem. God does what he says he will do. He used a star in the sky, and many of you have heard about this new, what they're calling the Christmas star, right? Where these planets line up. Tremendous, beautiful thing. What did God do with the Christmas star? Oh, some say it was just an aligning of the stars and planets, or, was a, or maybe it was a special event. I am not exactly sure. If you held a gun to my head, now please don't. I would say that God used the alignment of the universe to bring it together, because that's the way God often works. He shows what he will do, and he, he has creation show and reveal his glory. But he could have made a special star that night as well. You see, when God uses the remarkable, this is what it shows. It shows that he can. How about in your life when God has done something remarkable? It shows that he can. But it shows something else. It shows us that I can't. I couldn't have made this happen. You couldn't have made this happen. Not with the best efforts. What are the greatest accomplishments of mankind? They're things, buildings. And they'll say, wow, look at this wonder of the world. And they, those pale in comparison to the power of our God, Emmanuel, God with us, shows us that he can and we can't. We can barely put Ikea furniture together. We're going to have a struggle in a few weeks. These kids are going to have Christmas presents, and they'll come with instructions. The three most horrifying words at Christmas time batteries not included I knew I forgot something no matter what batteries you buy they're the wrong size I sure I'm sure it takes D batteries yeah I'm sure you, you're sure about that but it doesn't it takes 400 a batter double a batteries rather than one D battery or there's some convoluted, crazy size that, can only, size that can only be bought online or at a store 300 miles away. And what will you do, dads? You'll jump in your car and drive 300 miles to get that last battery. You see, the story of Christmas, the Emmanuel God with us, shows that he can and that we can't. But one last truth this morning. God does the impossible, the improbable, through the remarkable but the truth is unchangeable. The truth is unchangeable. The fact that God does what he says he will do doesn't change over time. God did dwell among men. God said that he would, and God did exactly that. There's a young man who took a church one time and called the former pastor. He said, Pastor, I'm having some trouble. And the pastor said this. He said, don't worry about it. You'll do just fine. You're changing locations, but you have the same God. You have the same Bible. You have the same Jesus, and you have the same gospel. You see, the truth of God is unchangeable. And the fact that he will always do what he says he will do won't change no matter where you are. Change your location. Change your hairstyle. Change your clothes. And God will still do what he says he will do. We will always prove the Bible true. We will either accept it and believe it and be blessed by it, or we'll reject it and refuse it and suffer the consequences. But we will always prove this to be true because it is true, and God will always do what he says he will do. God never changes. I read about how they've, they tried for years to get a clock that would not lose any time. And back in, 19, uh, uh, back in 1949, they invented the atomic clock. They were thrilled with the atomic clock because it uh, was reliable to one second within three years. So every three years, the atomic clock from 1949 would either gain or lose a second. They weren't sure which one it would do. And they were thrilled with the reliability of that. But recently, they switched to another clock. And this clock, though, based on cesium atoms, will take 300,000 years to gain or lose a single second. 
and yet they're still not happy with that. According to their, their theory, the age of the earth, we've been around for billions of years, so they need something longer. They're looking now and working on a single better model with a single mercury ion, be trapped in a vacuum by laser beams cooled to its lowest possible energy level. They're predicting that this new timepiece will be accurate within one second for every 10 billion years. They are working night and day to just be able to have a clock be reliable. And we have the God of the universe who does more than keep time accurately. And yes, he keeps accurate time. The time is the least of our problems. He keeps the world rolling. He is invested in your life and in my life. God with us. He came to earth. He brought salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Beyond that as Christians, he actively is involved in your life, working things after the counsel of his own will to make all things come together for good. Our God is reliable. There was an author. When he was in college, she lived in a boarding room with a few other people. The story goes, on the first floor, there was an elderly, retired music teacher. Every morning, this author had a ritual. He'd come down the stairs. He'd open the old man's door and say, well, what's the good news? And the old man would pick up a tuning fork was tuned to middle C and tap it on the side of his wheelchair, ding, and say, that's middle C. It was middle C yesterday, it will be middle C tomorrow, and it will be middle C in a thousand years. He'd always go on to say this, the tenor upstairs sings flat. The piano across the hall is way out of tune, but my friend, that right there is middle C. The old man had discovered one thing in his life upon which he could depend, a constant reality, middle C. And for Christians, we have a middle C. And his name is Christ, Jesus Christ. An absolute point. And while the world turns around us, there is someone with whom is no shadow of turning, no variance. It's Jesus Christ. See, Christmas brings to us reliability. What can we gain from Christmas? God with us. That God will always do what he says he will do. That means there's hope for the hopeless. There's peace for those who lack peace, and there's help for the helpless. There's, sad, there's gladness for those who are sad. There's joy for those who mourn. There's strength for those who are weak. Our God is reliable. Lord, I thank you for your word. But more importantly, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for being reliable. For showing us that you will always do what you say you will do. Lord, I pray you'd help us to look to you as we travel through this life. Lord, we may not trust in our own abilities, our own power, our own strength. But Lord, may we look to you. I wonder if you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, as you spoke, God spoke to me. Maybe your heart's been heavy. Maybe you've doubted the promises of God. Maybe you've equated the, the promise of God with the promise of a company politician would say pastor would you pray for me this morning as you spoke God spoke to me I needed that encouraged my heart or it challenged my heart I, I needed that this morning would you pray for me this morning that I respond to God the right way would you slip your hand up slip back down amen 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 who else I wonder if you're here this morning and you'd say pastor I don't know that if I died I'd go to heaven I've never trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'd like to, though. The Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but God commended, he showed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. My friend, you may be here this morning and not sure that you're on your way to heaven, but you can be sure today. You can trust Jesus Christ today whether you're here in the auditorium or at home online somewhere, you can pray right where you're at. Sometimes when we're talking to someone about the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, we'll help them pray a simple prayer like this. That's not a magic prayer. The Bible tells us that it's with the heart man believeth. A simple prayer that goes like this, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. He was buried and rose again. I trust in Jesus and him alone to forgive me from my sin and take me to heaven. And I wonder if you're here this morning or online, and I wonder if inside your heart, inside you, there's something that says, you know, you need to do that. My friend, you can pray right where you're at. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Tell him, he'll hear you. I know I deserve to pay for my sin, but I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, that he was buried and rose again. I trust in Jesus to take away my sin and for, take me to heaven. I wonder if you're here this morning and say, Pastor, I just prayed that and I meant that. It wasn't just saying those words, I meant that. I trusted Jesus. One of you here this morning, you say, Pastor, I just prayed that. Would you let me rejoice with you? Would you be willing to slip up your hand real quick? I'll draw no more attention to you than I did anyone else in here. The only one looking around here. Who would you say, Pastor, I just prayed that. I meant that. Would you slip your hand up, slip back down, I can see it. Who says, Pastor, I did that. Amen. I see that hand. Who else? Who else? Pastor, I just prayed that. And I meant that. Maybe you're online and you did that. We'd love for you to for you to call us, let us know. Lord, I pray that you bless this invitation. All those who indicated well, they need to do business with you, that they would do that today. Lord, those who trusted you, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.